Welcome for the second season of uh, our videos. Welcome to France, welcome to BC Saint George, where we are, and welcome to TechSart, which is our company. Uh, today we will talk about something that uh, will for sure make some noise and discussions. Uh, I will explain why TAD loudspeakers are the best. There were many critics, so now I have to explain. Please, before, just follow us on our social channels. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, because I suppose that not everybody knows how a speaker or loudspeaker works, I have to explain a little bit technically how uh, it works and uh, also there will be a little physics, but I want to be really very short and very effective. So that's why I take with me some samples so I can show while I'm speaking. Uh, Technically, uh, a loudspeaker is an easy thing. There is a coil which is immersed in a magnetic field and uh, when this coil is, uh, pa there is some current that passes through, this current coming from your amplifier, uh, this coil moves up and down. Basically, it's uh, something like this. We have, uh, here is the magnet and uh, here is the coil. And when there is some current that passes through the coil, then the coil moves up and down. To the coil is connected the cone or the dome, depending if it's a woofer or if it's a, a, a tweeter. So it is important to know that, uh, again back to here, this uh, distance, uh, the, the more the coil is closer to the, uh, to the magnet, higher is the magnetic field. Actually, you can feel it also yourself when you have two magnets in the hands, more you get close, more they are really uh, forcing to stick together or to repulse. So this is why it is important to have the minimum distance between the coil and, uh, and the magnet. And uh, this uh, channel that is in which the coil is, uh, goes up and down is called gap, magnetic gap. So um, the, the important is that when there is the current that passes through the coil, the coil just moves exactly following the signal that is coming into the, uh, into the coil itself, so coming from your amplifier precisely and uh, of course this is uh, basically the base of each loudspeaker I can show you here I just uh, uh, took one old loudspeaker and I killed it and uh, here is uh, in fact you can find you can see it here is the coil uh, this is uh, the magnetic gap this is the in which the coil goes in to uh, allow then the, when the current passes through these are the two cables of the, of the coils it moves up and down. Doesn't matter if it's a woofer, this is a small woofer, or if it is a tweeter, it is a big dome tweeter for a compression chamber, but it's basically the same as a dome tweeter. You have a the tweeter, the, and here is the coil, which is a lot little, but is a, because the movement is very, very little being a tweeter, so high frequencies. This understanding, you can imagine that more the membrane is lighter, quicker it can move. Actually, it is uh, uh, the perfect speaker should have a, a piston, which is a, could be a dome or could be a cone, that is uh, able to support any acceleration pushing the air without suffering any distortion. And this is the second very important point of any loudspeaker, is the cone or the dome that they do not have to uh, change their shape while moving and they are moving very fast and pushing a lot of air so there is a need a lot of force this is why we need that okay so there is a little uh, the conditions to have the perfect speaker in theory that's theoretical it means that the membrane should be zero weight zero moving mass uh, so the the lighter it is, the quicker it will move, and uh, more precisely, it will uh, repeat the shape of the signal we put in it. We should have here an infinite force, so magnets that are very, very powerful, and the gap that is very, very little, eventually zero also, between the distance between the gap, between the coil and the, and the, and the, ma the magnets. Uh, actually, it is, uh, increasing with the square of uh, the distance so the power you can apply 
the force you can apply. And then the other thing is that the, the material in which these domes or cones are made should be in, uh, made the stronger and the uh, undeformable as possible. So the material in which they are made is very, very important. Uh, Actually, we can even apply the, the Newton law, you see force uh, equal ma mass per acceleration. So acceleration is uh, equal to force divided mass. If mass is proximal to zero, the, the, the acceleration will be very high and uh, or the force is high. So uh, the force is uh, the acceleration directly proportional to the force and directly proportional to the, uh, to the mass. And uh, okay, we finish here with the... <laughs> with the with the theory and we go a little bit into the uh, the TAD loudspeaker. Why? I mean everybody can make excellent loudspeaker. Uh, the technology to build the magnets or to build the membranes is available to everybody. So it's just a question of willing, I believe, because there is no secret everybody can do. But why I'm still and strongly affirm that TAD is the best? Because TAD doesn't matter, doesn't care about sales really. Uh, they are a laboratory, they need uh, to uh, do the maximum as possible. Uh, just uh, eventually investigating new technology, new way of doing things. And uh, basically they just want to be positive, not uh, break even uh, in their balance. So that's a kind of strange uh, perception. It's not, nobody does this in the industries except TAD. So the way they do, the, for example, the domes is really unique. I think in an occidental world is basically absurd. I would say just unbelievable, crazy. It's, there is nobody would and even think to do so. Why? Uh, because it's, to make one driver it takes three days. Uh, because everybody takes uh, to make this membrane, the dome, and if you want to, to do it very uh, nicely, you make in beryllium. Just to give an idea, the beryllium is uh, almost the alpha weight of the aluminum. It's uh, three times stronger than aluminum. It's kind of uh, like uh, 292 uh, Young, which is the module of uh, the strength, against 67 of the aluminum, which is already kind of strong. It's a lot less elastic than aluminum, which is already an elastic. Uh, and uh, so this means that uh, it do not deform, doesn't make distortion, eventually breaks, but do not distortion, do not make any distortion. And also it's an excellent thermical conductor. That means that it can cool down a lot better the, the heat coming from the coil than any other material. So that's uh, why beryllium is used. Uh, everybody takes the beryllium uh, uh, foil and then it press and gives these shapes and, and then it glue the coil on it. Well, uh, TAD doesn't make this. TAD makes it, you want to make uh, uh, something that is lighter, lighter than everybody else. So it means it takes a shape of the dome in, on a copper foil and then it deposits for physical vapor deposition, basically put this uh, copper into a vacuum chamber and then uh, there is a process uh, that which is uh, sputtering, it's a uh, little bit uh, complicated, it's uh, uh, anyway uh, physical, so it just basically deposits atom after atom the beryllium over this copper foil, but you can eventually uh, decide the thickness you want. So, and there is not a foil that you need uh, at the minimum uh, thickness to be pressed, not crack, to avoid uh, other things, uh, the distortion and so on. And on a foil also the crystal are horizontal. I mean, they are going through all the, the layer. In a physical deposition, the crystal are vertical. So it means a lot more rigidity in the piston movement. This is how they are deposited. You can see vertically there is all the crystal that are in this way. And uh, just to give an idea, a, a kind like this in beryllium is in the order of the tenths of millimeter the thickness and in the TAD is in the range of the microns. Uh, how we, we take out so our copper plus uh, beryllium mm, dome from the chamber, vacuum chamber, and then we put into the acid 
and we just eat up, eat up all the copper and just we leave the beryllium. I mean, I, I've been in, uh, in Japan a um, couple months ago, actually in July, and I visited that and the way they do the, the loudspeaker, I mean, it's just, I, I told you, just crazy. I had the membrane of beryllium on my hand. It was so light that I didn't even feel that it was on my hand. If I could just blow slightly, it would fly away. And uh, it's way lighter than a piece of paper. It's crazy. And uh, uh, I cannot say the same for other beryllium membranes that I do have. There are only five people, in, uh, five women in TAD that makes all the speakers. Uh, because it needs uh, between two and five years to be certified to make one speaker. So which company, in reasonable company, would take this risk to con confide to basically five people that are not able to make all the, the speaker, uh, but any make one or two or three models. So basically they need the five people to fill the full range of speakers. This is TAD. I mean, it's just crazy. And uh, so, okay, we have the lightest membrane as possible because nobody in the world does a membrane so light. So light that it can achieve 100 kilohertz against the 20 of everybody else. So it means at least five times, maybe more. Again, I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, how is calculated the, in this case, the acceleration. And also the magnetic field, which is very important, we say, they, the gap, so basically the distance that they were telling before between the magnet and the coil is a three hundredths of millimeter, three hundredths of millimeter. So it means, that, and they are mounted by hand. It's uh, just uh, nobody does here. This is a quite a good loudspeaker. It's nothing exceptional, but is uh, is correct. But we will be at least one millimeter. And uh, to make three hundreds, it means the precision is crazy. So crazy that there is no machine making coil, binding the the coil in aluminum that is able to keep this perfect dimension. To do so, they make a coil slightly in aluminum, because I say the aluminum is unelastic, and they make it slightly smaller than what the diameter should be, and then they just increase the diameter in, uh, in this machine that it brings the, the coil at the right exact dimension, so that it can fit with a 300 of millimeter tolerance, and this is mounted by hand. So this is why, basically, if you can tell me of any other manufacturer in the world that do this, well, I would, be, I would appreciate because I don't believe anybody else that, that, that TAD can do it. And this is why their speakers for me are really the best. I mean, the, there is no tricks, there is no, it's just science pushed to the limit. Limit that nobody can do because industrializing is not possible and because it could, would be too expensive. And if you want to make money selling products, you have to have margin so they don't have to cost too much. This is not the point of CD. It costs whatever they cost. And then you get the best point. That's, uh, and they don't make margin. If you see their balances, there is not such a big amount of money left. I mean, they want just the necessary to keep and go on in the same way. So, uh, I hope I have been clear and uh, please follow me again in the next videos and uh, there will be many other interesting things uh, to do. Thank you very much. Goodbye.